Well, the deer did a job on my evergreens here for the winter, so I gotta protect them. So I got me some rebar there, and uh, that's a 10 foot length that I pounded uh, four feet into the ground. And what I'm gonna do, well, what I did, is I got me some chicken wire. Didn't come like that, I painted that green. And uh, wrapped, wrapped my evergreens the chicken wire and then what I did here was I just kind of interlaced the uh, the chick uh, the rebar through the chicken wire so low tech hopefully high effectivity here's a small one I wrapped and what I did was I just kind of scrunched the top down keep them from hopefully sticking their nose down in there Up. In case some of you might be wondering how I uh, make the dome, it's really easy, really. Uh, I just squeeze about every hand width or so. I'll squeeze, right, and then I'll where it uh, where it bends. Put my thumb there and I'll squeeze again, and just go around, squeeze, oops, squeeze. Just keep going all the way around. Right now that you've got the general shape, just come in and squeeze it all the way around until it forms kind of a dome, star-shaped dome. And then what you can do is uh, just kind of push it in a little bit further down to give you a little bit more closure. And this is only you only need to do this for the the low ones. Um, where the deer can can uh, eat the tips and hopefully I, you shouldn't be able to or shouldn't need to uh, enclose it completely I don't know if they're willing to stick their noses all the way in here or not if they if they do you can close it up um, you'll tell if they browsed uh, here or not hopefully they'll they'll get here and they'll decide that this is too freaky of a device that they uh, they'll move along to something else but that's pretty much all there is to that. But yeah, it's very um, uh, non-intrusive as far as sight. I mean, you can see it, but it doesn't uh, doesn't pop out at you. Yeah, it's pretty good. So let me show you me putting in the, one of the smaller ones. one there already covered so let me put this on there and uh, you'll see how it how it's done here it's really easy after you get all the uh, all the painting done and stuff so I just what I'll do is I'll start bottom line up to the holes in the bottom there you can see that stick it in here like that and weave it back and forth don't have to be exact just need to keep it from uh, blowing around about every three or four holes or so Surprisingly easy to do. What's nice is that it gives me enough room at the top to, uh, to bunch it down. For the big ones, I had to use two sections. So I have a bottom hoop and a top hoop.
And what I did was I just took some wire and I wrapped it around. Okay, the way I do the, the stitching of the top and the bottom halves is I'll start with a wire and I've measured it all the way around for circumference and then I've cut it. Cut it to the length I need and then I'm just gonna loop the start right here. And now, let's see if I can do this. I'm just going to go over in through the top one and out through the bottom one. That in through the top, out through the bottom. And I'm just I'm just basically wrapping the top wire, the, the bottom of the top hoop to the top of the bottom hoop. Right? And then I'll loop the uh, loop the wire through. I need both hands to do this here. I've got a splice right here. Just basically took two wires and wrapped them around each other. And then I'll just string that through like that. Nothing compl complicated. And so I'm going to wrap it all the way around. I'll uh, try to speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing in uh, regular time. Okay, gotten to the end, looped it all the way around, and uh, this is the this is the uh, what they call the the bitter end, the ending end, and this is the starting end. But the bitter end is any end that's uh, that is untied or unconnected. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over and under with the uh, with the finish end, so to speak. There, and then with the uh, beginning end, I'm going to go under, then over, in the same spot. Okay. Just a pair of needle lows. And uh, any of you people who ever did uh, safety wiring or uh, safety tying, whatever they call it, this way you do it. Just grab the end there and uh, twist. You can do it by hand too. You want to hold it at about a 45. I'll do it by hand and then I'll finish up with a pair of pliers. So hold about 90 degrees there. Twist over. Right? You want the twire the wires to twist over each other, not just one wire twisting over another wire, but you want both wires to twist. So you want to keep like a 90 degree angle between the wires. And this is just a uh, safety wire tip there and then once you get towards the end there you can just do the old single-handed twist because most of the holding power is up here and it's gonna get kind of ugly so then what you can do you hold it with a needle nose and you're gonna instead of just twisting it you're going to wrap it right so like this motion you're gonna kind of do a uh, an orbit, so to speak, with it. So I'm gonna, and what that does is that cinches this end tight. So maybe one more orbit. And then most importantly, you wanna pigtail it. Now you can trim this, I'm not going to, uh, but normally we'll trim it about an inch long and then we'll pigtail it. But pigtailing is basically curling the end in so uh, people who come behind you don't scrape themselves up and then what I'll do like I said is I'll just stick that in there see this little piece sticking out right here I'm just gonna curl that under that's kind of a long pigtail but anyway you get the point and that's it. That ties the, the top and the bottom hoops together. And hopefully uh, the deer will stay away from my shrubs. So there you go.
quick and easy deer guard for your shrubs. Hope that helped. Later.